Hey guys, it's so good to be with you. And of course, when I'm with you, I have a question for you. Do you remember that moment? The moment that you felt a rushing of the Holy Spirit, a prompting in your heart that you were a sinner in need of a Savior. And the very first time you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you asked Him to come into your heart and to be the Lord of your life, to recognize God as your Father in the Holy Spirit filling you, that you you desire to surrender and submit your life to Him this so you never again live by your own accord, but deeply desiring the will of God, deeply desiring to be cleansed by Him, to be made white as snow, to be made new. And do you pray for your unconnected friends? Oh man, I hope so. Every day we should be praying for those that God puts on our hearts, in our lives, in our circle of influence that do not know Jesus. And sometimes the truth is we grow weary of that because it seems like after years and years and years, nothing has happened. And, and we are tempted to give up. Brothers and sisters, that's simply a distraction of the enemy who wants us to stop praying for those that don't know the Lord. I hear this scripture from Luke chapter 15 when we hear what lengths God will go to just as he is our shepherd to get that one that is lost. So let's start with verse 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and heads home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Oh man, did you hear that? The, the shepherd will leave ninety-nine sheep to go get the one that wandered away because he knows that sheep could fall off a cliff, could get into the hands of the wolves, could be devoured by the world when he leaves a pack of sheep. And God our Father, like that shepherd, he is our shepherd, will leave the 99 to go get that one person who has wandered away, who has never been in a relationship with him, because he knows that that person could fall off a cliff into sin and temptation, be forever racked with guilt, or have long, um, long-standing circumstances and, and punishment, earthly punishment for that sin that they committed, separation from God, not being in a relationship with him. And so he'll leave them all to go get that person. And so number one, don't ever give up praying for your unconnected friends and family. Pray more. Just when you want to stop, oh, the God, God says pray more. Secondly, did you hear part of that? He says there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents and over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Of course, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the teachers who think they are above repenting. They, they're, they, they don't recognize him as our Lord and Savior. And so sometimes we do too. Sometimes we get out of the pattern of confessing and repenting of our sin after we're in a relationship with Jesus to keep our relationship pure and strong. So please, uh, brothers and sisters, we need to instead every day live our life with our faces on the floor before him, submitted and surrendered to him, desiring his will, desiring to live in full obedience, quickly confessing and repenting any time that we have turned to the left and have taken a turn away from him so we can be in right relationship with him. He is our shepherd. He will leave them all to find that one. He desires that none should perish, but all should be in relationship with him. Therefore, having experiencing part of the kingdom on this or her earth of hope and restoration and joy all the things that come in a relationship with Jesus, peace, so many, so so much, so rich, but even more when we leave this body, we leave this earth, we join Him in the heavenly kingdom, and the experience of the fullness of eternity. So God, we thank you, thank you, God, for each of us that know you. That at one time in our life, you left them all to come find us. Oh God, you cleanse us of our guilt and shame. You, you forgave us. You turned us around. You made us new again. You made us white as snow. And Father God, forgive us right now for every time that we have failed to confess and repent of our sins since that time. Father God, help us to never live in, 
in a righteousness that is selfish and, and unholy and, not, and without humility. But instead, God, we want to be righteous by your Holy Spirit, filled with humility, living a life on our faces before you. And God, we pray for those in our lives that do not know you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. And Father, forgive us when we give up and we think, man, they're never going to change. They're never going to come to know Jesus. We know from this word that word that you will go to all extents to, to get that one person. So God, help us when we want to stop praying for those people or give up hope. Help us to pray more. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. Amen.